We are in the last days and the book that seems to come to mind when discussing the end time events is Revelation, Daniel, Isaiah and the sum of the books that talks about end time in the Bible. But there is a book that is very important but yet it is not discussed. In fact, the book has been removed from the Bible. And the book even talks about one very important Bible figure named Enoch. According to the Bible, Enoch was Noah's great-grandfather and the great-great-great-grandson of Adam. He led a holy and obedient life to the Lord, Genesis 5. He also raises Methuselah, the longest living man, as a son, Genesis 5 verse 27. He has produced a large number of other children during his more than three centuries on earth. God takes him away after 365 years on earth, Genesis 5 verse 24. The word take seems to imply being snatched up or carried off possibly in a manner similar to how God had removed the prophet, Elijah. In Hebrews 11, Enoch is later listed alongside other greats like Abraham in the Hall of Faith. He seems to escape death because of his strong faith. Yet why? The other greats in the Hall of Faith of Hebrews 11 had to go through death. If we don't assume that Enoch is one of the two witnesses, then why did this mysterious figure manage to escape? First, it has been argued that Enoch serves as an illustration of what will transpire during the rapture, Hebrews 11 verse 5. God will carry believers into heaven at this time during the end times. Christians disagree on the precise location of the rapture during the end times, before the seven-year tribulation, halfway through the seven-year trial, after the seven-year tribulation, and so forth, but God will rapture believers at some point during the end times, just as he did with Enoch. Furthermore, Enoch was alive a short time before the flood. During this time, we observe the total moral degradation of Earth's populace. Some Christians have been hypothesized that since people lived hundreds of years ago, because of a vapor canopy that shielded the Earth from dangerous gamma rays, and created a temperate climate, God may have taken Enoch to heaven to prevent the flood that would occur a few hundred years later. Thirdly, we observe a righteous man coexisting with an evil generation, much like Elijah did during the reign of Ahab. With 450 prophets of the enemy, Elijah is the only remaining prophet of God, 1 Kings 18 verse 22. What information about Enoch is not found in the Bible? You may view the book of Enoch as canonical, depending on which branch of Christianity you belong to. However, for the purposes of this video, we'll assume that the canonical Bible consists of 66 books and classifying the book of Enoch as a pseudepigrapha. In other words, the book of Enoch was written by an author going by the name of Enoch, but this author was probably just a man using a pen name. We can see that the Bible does in fact make references to the book of Enoch. Jude 1 verses 14 to 15 and 2 Peter both make mention of this. The tradition in both of these passages seems to have been taken from the book of Enoch. However, as this video's discussion on the apostles' use of extra-biblical sources shows, we must not forget that they did so. In either case, the book of Enoch is an end-of-the-world text that talks about angels, the Nephilim, prophecies, and punishments for the wicked after the flood. It has a few parallels to what we read about in Revelation. As Christians, we exist in a morally bankrupt world that will soon come to an end. Why is the Bible account of Enoch important? We can draw comparisons between Enoch's story and the upcoming book of Revelation. We are called to walk in righteousness and faith with God in a wicked world. Christians in the end times will experience a rapture, even though many of us, if not all of us, as we do not know when exactly Jesus will return, will feel the pain of death. It's also significant to note that in 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 18, both living and deceased Christians will take part in this activity. Therefore, the rapture will occur in both scenarios. Christians will be lifted into the air during that time, just like Enoch. Additionally, we can observe how God can communicate with people even outside of the Bible and by operating under the viewpoint that the book of Enoch is a pseudepigraphical work. We do need to use discernment to separate what is real from what isn't. But we can also find glimmers of God's truth in other works of literature, 
just as the apostles quoted from secular philosophers and poets. The first book of Enoch, also known as the Ethiopic Book of Enoch, is a pseudepigraphal work that isn't part of any canon of scripture. The only complete version that is still in existence is an Ethiopic translation of an earlier Greek translation that was done in Palestine from the original Hebrew or Aramaic. Numerous apocryphal works were written about Enoch, the seventh patriarch in the book of Genesis, particularly during the Hellenistic era of Judaism from 3rd century BC to 3rd century AD. He was initially admired only for his piety, but later on it was thought that he had received special knowledge from God. This depiction of Enoch as a visionary was influenced by the Babylonian tradition of Enmedarana, the seventh antediluvian king, who was associated with the sun god and received revelations from the divine. Many of these elements of the Babylonian myth are present in the story of Enoch. One Enoch is an amalgam of numerous independent works, the majority of which are apocalyptic. The Apocalypse of Weeks, which was written just before the Maccabean uprising against the Seleucids in 167 BC, is its oldest section. It's challenging to date other sections, particularly those that discuss cosmological and astronomical theories. Parts of one Enoch may have been inspired by or originated with the Essene community of Jews at Qumran because of its views on messianism, celibacy, and the fate of the soul after death. However, no fragments of the longest section of the work, from chapters 37 to 71 were discovered among the writings of the Qumran. Due to this, scholars have theorized that this section may have been written in the 2nd century AD by a Jewish Christian who wanted to give his own eschatological speculations the authority of Enoch. He did this by adding his work to four earlier apocryphal Enoch writings. One Enoch was initially welcomed by the Christian Church, but was later removed from the canon of Scripture. Its survival is a result of the syncretic blending of Iranian, Greek, Chaldean, and Egyptian elements attraction to fringe and heretical Christian groups like the Manichaeans. The Israel Antiquities Authority is responsible for 11 fragments of the Book of Enoch in Aramaic that were discovered in Qumran's Cave 4, in 1948. The books of Enoch were transcribed for and explored by Yosef Millick and Matthew Black. Vermes and Garcia Martinez have published a new translation. So, what do you think about the rejection of the book, and what it says about the end time? Thank you for your support.